Hi, I'm Paul Newman, co-author of Objectives and Key Results, Driving Focus, Alignment, and Engagement with OKRs, and several other books on strategy and strategy execution. Joined today by my friend and colleague, Zach Ross. Hi, Zach. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, as Paul mentioned, my name is Zachary Ross. I'm currently a technical program manager at Google. And before that, I was a program manager at Amazon, and then I worked previously at at and and several startups. In this series of videos, Zach and I are sharing with you uh, some ideas about OKRs, what they are, how you can use them effectively. And today, what we want to talk about, Zach, is something I know I get asked a lot, and mm -hmm. that is, what is the difference between OKRs and other performance management techniques like Balanced Scorecard, yep. 40X, KPIs? So I'll talk briefly about that, and then I'm going to ask you about one big specific difference that I think you can shed a lot of light on for us. Uh, let's look at Balanced Scorecard. It's an area that I've got a lot of... Uh, experience with, having written several books on it, mm -hmm. and I, uh, uh, process that I think is, is really terrific. Balanced scorecard typically, though, is a bit longer term than OKRs. When you develop objectives mm -hmm. on a balanced scorecard, they're typically meant to last a, a longer period of time. People will often write objectives to last a year or so. Uh, measures on a balanced scorecard, similar, a longer, longer cadence. Uh, 40X, which stands for Four Disciplines of Execution. Very similar to OKRs in that they have what they call wildly important goals or, or WIGs. And yeah. the idea with, with those is, again, focus on what matters most to the organization. But they tend to be a little longer term in nature. Perhaps uh, increase our revenue from 20 to 40 million by now, between now and December 31st. So I think the big difference between those systems and OKRs, Zach, is one of cadence. That's right. With OKRs, typically most organizations will follow a 90-day uh, cadence in which they change their o score, grade, and update their OKRs every 90 right. days. Is that, right. is that your experience at Google? Absolutely, absolutely. So 90 yeah. days, we really have found you know that quarterly cadence to be kind of the sweet spot for us because it's, it's long enough that it gives us time to execute on the objectives that we set, and then we're able to uh, assess how those went and it's not so short that we feel like we're pivoting constantly right. and changing direction so much that we don't have enough time to really um, try out an idea and right. see if it works or not mm -hmm. and so for us and I think for many companies not just Google um, the 90-day quarterly cadence works really well because like I said before yeah. gives you enough time to flesh out an idea without pivoting too much okay that uh, leads me to a different question, sort of a tangent here, Zach. Yeah, sure. I don't want to ask you. We didn't we didn't think about this before we got on the air, too. But when you're talking about pivoting and changing direction and everything, that makes me think that uh, sometimes you're you're not going to achieve all your OKRs. Right? Yeah. You know, in fact, what do you think is a good sort of percentage of success that you should shoot for? Well, we you know at Google we really feel about 60 to 70 percent is okay. once again I'm using the term sweet spot of where we try to you know 60 to 70 percent of your objectives you're going to meet mm -hmm. the 30 mm -hmm. maybe even 40 percent you're not. Well, and so so that's a fairly significant number. Let's just say you hit 30, 70 percent. That means 30 percent you're not achieving. What are the ramifications for that? I know I'm always telling my clients with these systems that you're really, you're implementing them to learn more about your business. It's about asking better questions and sometimes you need to fail to do that. And it's easy for me sitting in the consultant's chair to say yeah, that, but well. real world, how does it work, for example, at Google? Well, we, we celebrate it. Uh, and mm. In fact, we uh, we don't expect you to uh, achieve 100% of your OKRs, specifically yeah. because we're afraid that if you're always hitting your objectives, you're not pushing yourself hard enough okay. and having inspirational, aspirational uh, goals. And right. yet, on the flip side, if you're only achieving 15, 20, 30% of your goals, right. then we also ask tough questions like, well, you know, why is it so low? Is it that you're just shooting so far that it's almost impossible to achieve your goals? Mm -hmm. Or maybe there's something on the execution side that there or things outside of your control yeah. that we need to investigate as well. Well, but that 67%, um, you know, we're okay to fail. It's okay to fail, yeah. and uh, we just have to learn from it. Right. And so do you find, it's, is there a learning curve for people that are starting to use OKRs maybe for the first time that they automatically want to maybe shoot too high or too low or what? Oh, well, that's a good there. question. You know, I've found as folks have either come to the company or new to the methodology, mm -hmm. they tend to be conservative. And I think mm -hmm. that's a natural okay. inclination that so you want to hit the, all those goals, yeah. and we have to actually push. Um, teams, you, know, you, you can do more or try this and see if you can and do it. Right. And I think as you've shown um, in, in other conversations we've had and even in your books, yeah. that those teams that actually are aspirational, inspirational, and push themselves actually lead to a lot more success right. and are much more productive than teams that are more conservative yeah. because they're only pushing to get to hit their hit the mark that they've set rather than going beyond that. Right. It's kind of a corny old saying, but isn't it somebody said, uh, shoot for the moon and if you miss, you'll still land among the stars? That's right. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. 
bonus content for all of you watching today on that. Uh, originally, the idea of this video, though, was to talk about the difference between uh, balanced scorecard, 40X, KPIs, and OKRs, and I think we've landed on the big difference being cadence, right? That's right. Yeah. So important. Yeah. So thank you all very much for listening, and I hope we found this video helpful. If you'd like to learn more about OKRs, please visit our website at uh, www.okrstraining.com. Thanks very much, Zach. Thank you. All right.